I'll put it in my lap again. A very good morning guys. Once again, this is Ramit back to you. Now first of all, I would like to say Shubho Moha Naomi to each and every one because this is Tuesday. This is Tuesday and it is October 4. So as you can see guys, this is the road and we are right now in Jalgaon. So once again, very good morning. So the first of all, the plan is actually from Jalgaon, we will be going to Ajanta. Now Ajanta is actually approximately like 65 or 63 kilometers from Jalgaon city and it will al almost like take about 1 hour 30 minutes to reach Ajanta and yes most importantly we will be visiting the Ajanta caves that is one of the part of our plan and from Ajanta our final destination is Aurangabad so I have already revealed to you so our main destination and spot is Aurangabad and also in Aurangabad we will be staying out there for one or two nights so let's see hoping for the best so we'll be leaving at 9 30 so let's have our breakfast now let's have a look at our breakfast so what we have in our breakfast we got varas along with coconut chutneys puri sabji dhoklas idlis Samosas right up there And that's it And now it's time for us to check out from the hotel and leave for Ajanta So at first we have already said that from Jalgaon to Ajanta it takes about 1 hour 30 minutes and the distance covered will be 63 or 65 kilometers. And now talking about the road, the road is completely smooth. Yes, it's true that sometimes you will get some kind of rough surface. Talking about our journey, we basically booked one Swift Desire and yes, it is the most comfortable way to travel by cab and most economical way to travel by bus. Now let me tell you the perfect plan for the travel. All you need to do is to leave from Jalgaon and start your travel from early morning onwards towards Ajanta. And yes, it's true that roadway buses are available for Ajanta at regular interval. Bus starts from central bus stand around 3 to 4 kilometers from the railway station of Jalgaon. And yes, you can hire auto, share auto, should also be available from outside the station. Now let's look at the signboard, it is 3 kilometers away. And yes, finally, we made it to the entrance. A few moments later. So while going towards the ticket counter, you'll get the parking lot over there. And yes, there is also a shopping plaza. Now let's move to the ticket counter. Talking about the opening hours, it is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. But it is closed on Monday. And talking about the tickets, for Indian visitors, it is about 40 rupees per person. And if you pay via online, it is rupees 35. Now other foreign visitors, it is rupees 600. And if you pay online, it is rupees 550. And yes, the Ajanta caves are open for children below 15 years of age. 
ਕਰਨ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਲੈ ਸੈਂਡੀ ਕਰਾ ਦੀ ਹੈ ਟੂ ਟੈਲ ਯੂ ਦ ਬਸ ਸਰਵਿਸਿਸ ਆਰ ਕੰਪਲੀਟਲੀ ਅਵੇਲੇਬਲ ਦ ਬਸ ਵੁਡ ਡ੍ਰੌਪ ਯੂ ਐਟ ਅਜੰਦਾ ਟੀ ਪੁਆਇੰਟ ਫ੍ਰਮ ਵੇਅਰ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਟੂ ਵਰਕ ਫੋਰ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਫਿਊ ਮਿਨਟਸ ਟੂ ਰੀਚ ਦ ਅਜੰਦਾ ਕੇਵ ਸੈਂਟਰੀ ਕੇਟ ਨਾਉ ਥਿਸ ਇਸ ਇਨਸਾਈਡ ਦ ਬਸ and right now we are moving towards the ajanta caves entry gate it takes about almost 7 to 10 minutes to reach the ajanta caves gate and after that we reached the ajanta caves entrance safely So while walking towards the entrance we'll find this kind of sign boards which are talking about many countries and their national flags the world heritage sites like agra fort that ajanta caves csmt station in mumbai bhima hampi temple some forts in jaipur and jaisalmer the jantar mandir in delhi qutub minar in delhi humayun stone the red fort or the lal kila in delhi the taj mahal at agra tirumala tirupati the bulan darwaza many temples in the south indian part the konark sun temple and the saint basilica church so guys we have already made it to the ajanta caves so in front of this structure we got the ticket counter So this is our first destination point from Jalgaon to Ajanta Caves. So right now we will be moving towards Ajanta Caves. First we have to book the tickets. Now there is a sign board right over there talking about the price of Indian visitors and foreigner visitors tickets. This building contains the ticket counter as well as the security checking purpose. and also we got the mtdc restaurant and look at this bodhi tree this tree was planted by sir akbar aidari in 1937 now guys let's move ahead but look at them they're busy taking selfies it is now time for us to climb 350 steps to reach the ajanta caves let's do this right over there it talks about the cave paintings now let's move on and yes guess what you need to carry two to three bottles of water if you are traveling with two or three persons You will complete this climbing in about 15 to 30 minutes. And right over there you can spot the Ajanta Caves. It is now time for us to talk about the history of ajanta caves the first of all there are over 30 caves some of them are unfinished and negligible but 16 contain mural paintings but the best work is to be found in caves 1 to 16 17 and 19 now right over there this is cave number 1 now cave number 1 is one of the finest examples of vihara architecture evolved towards the end of the 5th century the facade is lavishly ornamented it is dark inside its beauty enhanced by six richly carved columns on the veranda right over there you can spot gautam buddha inside cave number 1 the paintings mainly illustrate jataka stories A typical one at the left of the main entrance 
has been identified with C.B. Jataka. The story goes that a pigeon chased by a hawk sought the protection of King C.B. who was a Bodhisattva. The ceiling was completely painted. And yes, it is a remarkable scene from the Buddha's life in large scale compositions. Now, let's move towards cave number 2. And see this, we also got one Ajanda Elora book which contains the full fledged information about its history. Now, this is cave number 2. So we also got one signboard in cave number 2. Now let's talk about its history. This cave number 2 is somewhat alike in plan to cave number 1. The veranda has a lovely painted ceiling. Right over there it's Lord Buddha. In the panel above the cell door the Bodhisattva is seen in one of the heavens. It is to be a place in India close to the Himalayan rain and Queen Maya is to be his mother. So we came outside after watching cave number 2 and look over there we got a new friend though now he is just watching over us now let's move towards the other caves and now we came to cave number 5 So this is actually cage number 5, I mean cave number 5, sorry. Well, no signboard. Yeah. So in cave number 5, after ascending some steps, there are shal bhanjikas on both sides of the entrance gate. The ceiling is just like demolished. It's actually an incomplete one. In cave number 6, we didn't visit that, there are numerous Buddha figures in varied studies. So right over there, that is cave number 7, which has pillars of this cave of different style. Now let's go down towards the rest of the caves. And yes, you need to be careful of the steps. Now towards your right, you can observe cave number 8, which is basically an electricity room. Now this is cave number 9. So let's go inside cave number 9. So here are many themes and motives from everyday life. For instance, the frees of herdsmen running after cattle are visible, the row of Buddha figures on the columns, the scene on the walls at the back and the fragments of the painting are just fantastic. Now let's go up towards cave number 10. Now this is cave number 10, the entrance gate. Let's go inside. Talking about cave number 10, it is also a prayer hall and is quite similar to cave number 9. You can pause the video and read the sentence of cave number 10. Talking about cave number 10, it is possibly the earliest of all the Ajanta excavations and also larger in size. The pillar shows a royal personage with a retinue of soldiers, dancers and musicians on the left wall. And there are finest examples of ancient painting. There are paintings of dresses, jewelries of that remote period while adding to the interest of those pictures even though are somewhat obscured by layers of deposit. 
Now let's move towards the other caves. In cave number 11, only few paintings are left behind. In cave number 12, the three sides of the cave are living places for Buddhist saints. Also beds made of stone are shown in this cave. And in cave number 13, it is used by Indian Archaeological Department as their store. Now moving towards cave number 16, 17, towards cave number 26 also. Now this is cave number 16. Talking about cave number 16, this point commands a good view of the river. Down the slope, the entrance gate is carved with an elephant on their either side. Here the stairway leading to the river has survived in part. This could have been the original approach to the temples. Right over there, Lord Buddha. The architectural beauty of this cave temple makes it one of the most striking in the series. Right over there, that is Ajanda Cave number 19. If you want to take picture perfect glimpses and great selfies, you need to be careful though. But yes, it is a scenic beauty. And look at that, we also got one waterfall. Now let's move on to the last two to three caves which are open for visitors. Now this is cave number 24. Now let's talk about cave number 24. You can pause at any time and read the signboard. Now this is the entrance of cave number 24. Now this is the second largest of these excavations and the cave would have been one of the most impressive in the series if it was completed. The bracket capitals of its veranda, columns and the lintel of the door have beautiful figures. Though it was an incomplete cave. But look at the ceilings. It looks like it can get perished at any moment. But don't worry, it won't happen. And right now we are going down towards cave number 26 that is right over there. So far we have crossed so many caves and this is the most important cave and the most beautiful cave so far. Now let's talk about the history of cave number 26. This cave is almost as crowded with sculpture as cave number 19. There is the entrance and right inside the cave it has a colossal reclining of Buddha figure. Look at the ceiling and we are talking about this one. We can also call as sleeping Buddha. And so far we have completed all the caves. Few of them were incomplete. By the way, look at this bird. So far we have completed many caves. Few of them were dilapidated in condition, few of them were incomplete and few of them were not allowed for visitors. Right now we are moving towards the back entrance. This is the Wagu river.
and from this point you can also observe the Ajanta Caves. What a scenic beauty! Now this is the site plan of Ajanta Caves, rather the map of Ajanta Caves. Also, we got one location of Ajanta Caves with a full-fledged signboard. And the exploration of Ajanta Caves is finished. So guys, we have finally completed our tour in Ajanta Caves. And right now, we are just in front of Hotel Ajanta Green. And we will be having our lunch. So, how was the experience? Amazing. It's amazing place and awesome sculpture. So Hotel Ajanta Green and Restaurant is about 5.06 kilometers away from the Ajanta Caves. And this is inside the restaurant. And right now we will be having our lunch. So during lunch we ordered two non-veg thalis and one veg thali. And we got this in non-veg thali. So guys, right now, we are moving towards Aurangabad. So it takes about 101 kilometers to cover the distance from Ajanta to Aurangabad. And the time is about 2 hours 37 minutes. So guys, the vlog part 2 of Ajanta Caves exploration is complete. So I hope you have liked the video. And this is our hotel guys, the Oris Hotel and Banquets in Aurangabad. We will talk the full fledged information in vlog part 3 very soon. So guys, thank you so much for watching.